child care is foundational in getting people back to work. It's pretty simple. You don't have child care, can't get parents back to work. And that was a very big focus for President Biden last night. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And there is no one better to talk to about getting Americans back to work than Labor Secretary Marty Walsh. I spoke to him earlier this morning. Secretary, last night the president was talking about jobs, new jobs, creating jobs. A few months ago, we had a serious job shortage, and we need that. But today, with the economy reopening, 42% of small businesses say they can't even find workers. Are we actually headed for a labor shortage? No, I wouldn't say that. I think I think that the investment that the president's making in workforce development is, is key to, to this recovery. And retraining workers into new industries and new fields is something that we should be doing. A lot of these industries that have passed, that, are, that have kind of gone by the wayside, whether it's due to COVID-19 or other reasons, we have a huge opportunity here. But that's big picture, long term. Right now, as more and more jobs open up and people aren't filling them, I mean, we do hear every day employers say people are doing, I shouldn't say so well, but they're getting a lot of government support with expanded unemployment, with stimulus. They're not going to come and even look for work until September. And if they wait that long, these employers may have figured out they don't need the workers. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that a lot of people are trying to say because of unemployment benefits, people aren't going back to work, but people want to get a job. And, and when you think about an opportunity for workforce development into a job that pays you more than you made before, people aren't going to turn their nose at that. So have you spoken to any restaurant owners, small businesses? They're not telling you they have this I've problem? I've spoken to lots of them, yeah. And they're not telling you No, they, they have. Problem? In my hometown, they've told me particularly, that they've told me they're having issues with that. Uh, with unemployment as far as people not coming back to work. and But we look at the numbers, the numbers aren't saying that. So again, Is anybody I, going to admit that? But I, th I think a lot of it still is dealing with coronavirus. I think people are still worried about coronavirus. Not everyone's vaccinated. The president mentioned last night 75% of people that are 75 and older have the, have gotten vaccinated. Younger people haven't been vaccinated yet. I think that, that whole idea will change as more people get vaccinated. Last night, the president talked about raising the federal minimum wage. Why aren't wages even going up naturally, though? Right in Kentucky this weekend, the Kentucky Derby, they're saying they can't find workers. Well, in a state where the minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty five cents and an event that charges 15 bucks a drink. I think why aren't wages just going up on their own? I think in some cases they're going up, but they're not going up for, for, for the lowest skilled workers. And that's a problem. And, you know, when the president talked about that, uh, you know, when, when somebody looks me straight in the face and says that $15 is going to ruin the economy, it didn't ruin the economy anywhere in the country where, we, where it's been raised to or heading towards $15 an hour. Uh, we should respect our workers. I agree with the president 100 percent. We're going to push and fight to, to get this passed through Congress. That argument that we hear from employers, oh, if we have to pay more, you know, we're going to have to raise prices. We're going to have inflation. Well, A, why can't a lot of companies just maybe make a little less money or B, What's wrong with a little inflation? Isn't that better than, I don't know, Walmart employees having to be on food stamps? See, I, I believe companies should make a profit and, and because that's what keeps our economy moving forward. And they forward. do. And they do. But I also think they should pay their fair share and respect your employees. Uh, you know, when I was going through my confirmation hearing, one of the, sen one of the senators asked me uh, about the $7.25 minimum wage. And I thought to myself, a cup of coffee is, you go to Starbucks, it could be $5. So you work for an hour and you, you get a cup of coffee. We, we, need to, we need to help the American worker. Do we need to do more to look at CEO versus worker pay? Even in the last year, when you look at the highest paid CEOs, they were from some of the industries hit the hardest, cruise lines, hotels, gaming industry. And you start to think, hold on a second, the trillions of dollars, the Fed, Congress spent helping businesses. And these guys are making so much money when thousands, millions of people lose their jobs. I think, do we need to look at that kind of pay? See, I think I, I'm not as concerned about how do I look at their pay, what they make. What I want to see is that they pay their fair share of taxes. And with the president rolled out last night, we're asking people who earn big money, good money, to pay taxes to help keep our country moving forward on infrastructure. And the infrastructure is roads and bridges, and the infrastructure is universal pre-K, and the infrastructure is community college, and the infrastructure is, you know, family paid family leave and, and health. Th that's infrastructure. That keeps our country moving forward. And, and I think if, if we look at the plan that the president has unveiled, two big ones, and we put it all together, we're a different society. We respect our workforce, and companies can still make a profit and be, be successful. These initiatives last night were inspiring, amazing, but they require a lot of money and very big government. And that means these programs need to be executed well and they need to work. Yeah. 
government doesn't work that well. How big of a risk are you taking here? Well, I think it, the, the, the key is really making sure these plans are rolled out correctly because it, it's one thing passing them and it's one thing announcing them. But if they're not carried out right, then the intention behind the plan didn't work out. So whether it's paid family leave and really supporting the family in their time of need or it's universal pre-kindergarten, getting young people into a school at a very early age so that when they graduate high school, the president talked about this last night, and they get a chance for a pathway to college or a pathway to a career. You and I were talking off camera a minute ago about these new industries. Putting young people on a path to those good paying jobs, that's important for our country. I want to talk about that for a bit more because he was hinting around that the new jobs, jobs of the future, does that mean there's going to be some serious reskilling, skills training programs? Because to get those jobs of the future, you got to have the skills. I think we have to partner with those companies. So when these companies create these, co create these industries, we should partner with them, bring them in, say, what do you need? How do we train these workers? So we're not doing the training the way we used to, change the way we do the training, whether it's programming from computers or, or, or coding, I should say, of computers, whatever it might be. We should be working hand-in-hand -hand with these companies to help tr use investment from the federal government, investment from government to train the workers for those industries. The best way to get people back to work is to get more people vaccinated. We've had an extraordinary last couple of months, but things are definitely slowing down and they're getting political when you think about vaccine hesitancy. Does the administration have to take a different approach, you know, monetary rewards, recognition for states, you know, a race to the top, kind of like what Obama did with education? I wouldn't say that. I think what we have to do is explain to people the, the importance of getting vaccinated. And I know some people don't believe in vaccines, but coronavirus took over half a million American lives. Uh, it, it, it's a real, real virus. It, it can still kill people. So I think for people to protect yourself and protect your families, I would encourage you to get the virus. I would encourage you, if you have concerns or hesitation, talk to your doctor and see what your doctor says about it. When we think about aid, right, in, in the beginning of the coronavirus, when the CARES Act first came out, we needed to get money out. And money went in some places to the wrong places, but that was okay. Now that we're over a year into it, and, and the administration's plans, I mean, we're talking trillions of dollars. Do you need to look at more targeted support? We still have a moratorium on foreclosures and housing markets up 30%. Yeah, I think the concern was, and I was in a different role than I was the mayor of Boston. My concern were, were that land, people who own homes were going to lose their homes. People that were renting were going to be put out in the street. People that own businesses were going to be, their business was going to be evicted. I still think... But that's a year ago. That was, but we're still not out of the virus. And I, and I think as, as we get through the next couple of months here, we're going to see a lot of these different safety nets, if you will, phased out. And we'll be moving back into a new norm, hopefully a new norm. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.